Hello, and welcome to week six of the We're Still Dancing video challenge. This is the last lesson in our series, and I would like to take a moment to thank those of you who watched, those of you who commented on our Facebook page, and most importantly, those of you who did the exercises and posted your videos to our Facebook wall. I want to encourage all of you to not stop doing the exercises once this challenge is over. Continue to work on them over and over again. It takes such a little amount of time, five minutes a day tops, and it will do wonders for your dancing. So keep up the work. Okay, for our final lesson, I wanna work on the simple concept of taking a forward step. Now I know to many of you at first that may seem really silly, but remember, this is a series on the mechanics of movement. And by breaking down even the simplest of movements, it can really help when things start to get more advanced. Now, often when I am doing a, a coaching or a lesson with a student, uh, I will ask the student this question. How do we take a forward step? And I don't mean uh, in, in the context of dancing, but just in general, how do we take a forward step? And most times I get uh, a look of confusion from the student, and here's why. It's a really difficult question to answer. It's like asking the question, how do we raise our arm? The answer is, we just do. So today, I wanna use the simple principles of physics to break down how we take a forward step and then give you an exercise that will help to build both muscle memory and brain memory so that as your movements become more advanced, it will be easier. All of the lessons in this series have been about the mechanics of movement, using the laws of physics to understand movement and how to use force and momentum to your advantage. Isaac Newton discovered the three laws of motion. Uh, today we are going to deal with law number one and that says simply, that an object at rest will remain at rest until acted upon by an outside force, and conversely, uh, an object in motion will remain in motion until acted upon by an opposing force. We're gonna talk about the first part of that in a minute, but first, let's establish what it is that we do wrong when taking forward steps. <clears throat> when we teach our children uh, to walk, we do so with something very similar to this type of training. We say, pick one foot up, place it in front of the other, and then take the other foot, pick that foot up and place it in front, and repeat. Pick the foot up, place it in front. Pick the foot up, place it in front, and so on. This type of continuous training uh, causes us to subconsciously think about which foot we're thinking about the foot that's moving, the foot that we have to pick up and place, pick up and place. So concentrating on the moving foot. That works okay when we're just taking normal small size steps, but here's where the problem comes. When in dancing we are requested to take larger and larger and larger and larger steps, it starts to become a problem because your brain is thinking about the moving foot. So when you're told, take a bigger step, your brain says, okay, to take a bigger step, what do I have to do? I've got to move my moving foot further, and that results in something that looks like this, a lurch forward. So we're going to fix this by going back and talking about that law one more time. So the law said that uh, an object at rest you are the object, your body is the object standing still, will remain at rest until acted upon by a force. So when we take a foot and place it out in front of the other foot, that's not really creating a force to make us move forward. Where does that force come from? That's what we need to establish. So obviously, if placing a foot out in front is not causing the force, which leg is causing the force? It's the supporting leg that causes force. It's the pushing through the leg into the floor that motivates our body to move forward. So today's exercise 
is going to help us switch both physically and mentally from thinking about our moving foot to thinking about our supporting foot. Now with this exercise, once again, uh, you're probably going to need a surface. I have the ballet bar here. You may not need the surface, but I am going to ask you to use that surface uh, just in case. And you're going to need uh, one more uh, thing to do this exercise. Uh, I'm going to suggest, there are two ways that I have done this in the past, but I'm going to suggest to have just a piece of paper, any piece of paper. I've got just a napkin here, but any piece of paper will do. Uh, and the point of this piece of paper is we're going to put it in between our knees and hold that piece of paper there throughout the entire exercise. The point is to keep our knees together so that our knees cannot separate either out or to pass each other this way. Another way that I have done this in the past, uh, and uh, I recommend it on the, the uh, basis that it works better than the paper, but I don't recommend it because uh, it can cause you to fall, and that is to take something and wrap it around and tie your knees together, a belt or a scarf or something, so that you cannot move your knees while doing this. Uh, but for that reason, I'm going to say use a piece of paper. All right, so we're going to start near the ballet bar, and I'm not going to necessarily use the ballet bar. I just want it there just in case. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the piece of paper in between our knees, bend your knees slightly, and push your knees together to hold that piece of paper. Never let your knees come apart and keep holding that piece of paper the whole way through this exercise. With your knees pressed together holding that piece of paper, it becomes almost impossible to take a foot and move it out in front to take a step. So what it forces you to do in order to take a step is to use the supporting foot. So we'll start with all of our weight on the right foot. Our left foot is free. And in order to take that step forward, I have to focus on the supporting foot pushing up and through to take that step. Once again, never losing this piece of paper that is in between my knees. Again, that's why I've got the, the surface there, just to put your hand on if you need it. And then we repeat. So we push off of the supporting foot and move forward. Push off of the supporting foot to move forward. And notice that the foot is, that is moving, I want it to not be uh, on the floor. I'm going to let it stay off of the floor each time. So I'm pushing through my supporting foot each time. Once I get to the end, I'll take the piece of paper out, turn around, take the piece of paper back in, and again move forward. And step, and step, pushing each time through the supporting foot to take that step. And doing this exercise, like all the other exercises, for one to two minutes, three to four times a week, we'll start to build a muscle memory and a brain memory that movement is created from the supporting foot and not from a moving foot. So I'm now gonna do this for one full minute, back and forth. Feel free to do it with me or do it after the video. <clears throat> <clears throat> and here we go. And push and push and push. Supporting foot. Push and push and push and push. And we stop and turn around. Place the pad back in, the piece of paper back in. And push and push and push and push and push and push and push. And push. Turn around. And push and push and push and push and push and push and push. Turn around. And push and push and push and push and push. Push through that supporting leg each time and turn around and we should be done. So do that exercise just the way I did and you'll find that you will start to subconsciously, without having to work at it, think about your supporting foot 
versus the moving foot. Good luck, and I can't wait to see how this makes your dancing better.